Hi guys and welcome to Bomb Anime. It's your girl Ruka. A big boy Sammy here, bringing you a part two of Other Side Picnic. So this did quite a lot of different things that were interesting to me, such as the way that they played around with the light, darkness and sound versus silence. It made it really interesting for the atmosphere and I think that that's one of the main things that you need to be doing when you're doing a sci-fi horror and they did it really well. I really like the fact that they use loads of creepypasta, urban legend sort of things as well. Incorporating that into your story and making it more tangible was good for me. I really, I really like that. I really got into the stories here. I agree with you as well. I really like the creepypasta. We spoke about this in our part one and yeah. they kept it going all the way through. It manages to make it more modern. We don't have to keep harping on the same sort of monster stories that we've heard time and time again retold in different ways. It allowed for us to have like a completely different experience with these horror. On the flip side of that, the monsters at times were really ridiculous and it took away from the horror aspect because they weren't scary. Not only were they not scary, they were silly. Like those big heads. Yeah, the big heads were. Come on. It's a graphics it, issue. It, it was just, it was a prop. Really? So, yeah. you, so if they had enhanced the graphics, you would have been scared of white beings that just run. I'm not, they didn't I'm, do anything scary. It's not normal, is it? Yeah, it probably was an animation issue. It was extremely poor and it ruined the mood. It took away from the things that they were doing well. I guess we have to disagree on this one. Sorrel's backstory was horrific and I wish that they had actually showed us a bit more of that because I think that people take for granted that real life is extreme horror. Yeah. And instead of making it all fantastical, they could have spent a bit of time. She was hunted by her own family who were in a cult and her mom died, but we don't even know how that happened. They were hunting her and trying to abduct her and ended up dead themselves. So what if something like that happened to her mom? What if they were the cause? That is some serious horror that they could have definitely explored but I understand why they didn't explore it this was about the other side I want to touch on that because like the backstory was really two sentences more or less and it was so like it was impregnated with so much stuff that just definitely needed to be explored more and I really really wanted to know more they could have spent an episode on it or maybe half an episode just giving us a bit more on that before that point I thought that Sasuke I kind of thought that was her mum so did I until, I thought that yeah. was a possibility as well yeah until like they were like oh yeah by the way mum's dead what what and then that's it rush over next week like they could have definitely spent some more time on that well I kind of disagree with you there and that is for one reason alone this anime every single time you thought they forgot about something they brought it right back yeah you thought they forgot about the soldiers they brought it right back it was there again in the, in, in the next episode I don't think that they have forgotten about that I think that they, they've told us this for season two because they mentioned something that was very peculiar to me when she was telling her story about her grandparents and her dad hunting her down she said she had a dream of a soft red person hugging her and asking her if she was yes. worried now that makes me think that she's actually had contact with the other side but she didn't know that she was having contact with the other side and i really think that we're going to come back to this and they're going to show us this in season two and it's going to start the dots are going to start connecting her mom might not be dead yeah her mom might still be sasuke i don't Satsuki, yeah. yeah her it was alluded to that she looks like her right if it ends up that being the case and also come on man it's kind of deep a cult the mom was sacrificed but what was she sacrificed to and what was the cult involving in it could have been a cult to the other side yeah, to, exactly. the, to the beings that were over there and she could have been sacrificed to the other side because i was also thinking that her mom could have been you know uh, i can't remember what the the monster in particular the one with the white hat yeah the white hat lady has has something yeah i kind of thought oh that could be her as well especially when um you saw tariko start talking about how it's only through fear that they can contact with us and blah yeah. blah blah I was like yeah. there's going to be a connection here I didn't get it but I got something else but 
I thought that was linked, but clearly wasn't. And the white hat monster has actually done nothing to them as well. No. Although, yes, she has been quite creepy and everything like that. They have her hat and they used it as a gate multiple times and she didn't appear. Well, she did appear. Not every time. Also, they did see Satsuki as well. Satsuki. Yeah, only Sarau was yeah, seeing only her, saw her. Yeah, which so. is also interesting. There's a lot of little things that they've drawn our attention to multiple times that's telling us this is probably important, but you're not going to see it right now. It's a really good way to build suspense and keep the story going. I think they've done a good job on that. Now, I thought that there were certain things that were just a little bit stupid, such as the soldier saying, we suggest you don't use your phones, but didn't tell them why not. And then they immediately use their phones. Like, come on. First of all, I would have taken their phones and smashed them to smithereens if I knew that using it was going to cause a all out war with beings you can't shoot. Yeah. And then on top of that, the soldier, I think it was Greg, yeah. hated the girls for no reason. And it made me think that he was similar to Sorrel but didn't know it because Sorrel kept saying she can sense a sort of strangeness about things that are involved with the other side. And I think that his dislike for her was because he must have had some kind of contact, some kind of um, brush, but yeah. he doesn't realize it. And he can sense that they're somehow connected to it. And that's why he was so adamant that they're not human no i agree with you i didn't feel any animosity towards greg i thought yeah. he's just in a situation that his brain couldn't fathom and he gave up his life in order to help save his people greg was a good egg i actually enjoyed the inconvenience of them traveling back and forth to the other side yeah i thought that they could have easily just made it seriously easy to get there and for the sake of the show but they didn't do that and i think that added to the other side being this really otherworldly strange place multiple otherworldly strange places like it was crazy how they decided to put layers of different metrics yeah and matrices into it it was really really nice because it's all well and good saying there's another side and it just be another whole world but it being multiple different worlds with different entrances and exits ah oh, i thought it was brilliant stroke of creative genius there i also wanted to know though how do people know about sarau being knowledgeable about the other side i didn't like that that wasn't ever explained and it seemed impossible for other people to know because she doesn't talk to anybody else she only talks to tariko but people didn't know about tariko being involved it's weird i kind of had my own sort of made up connection for that what was that i think satsuki let her students know about sarau i don't know how that works but all the people that come up to her have been her students all the two people all the two people <laughs> that have come up to her has been her students you know what a hundred percent yeah of them people have come up to her that's a reach that and a about. stretch well you know i got nothing so i had to make it up myself in it now i don't know if you've watched i think you haven't but there's a series called yamishibai and it's japanese ghost stories i felt like this was giving me yamishibai vibes and although yamishibai is kind of the animation style is really strange yeah. sometimes it's kind of like a picture book feel or like cut out feel yes but unfortunately yamishibai has more of an eerie feeling than this did I felt like they did fail a lot in terms of giving you that eerie, horror, scary feeling was there was no subtlety in the music. A lot of the times when it was like scary music, it was loud. loud it was yeah. really, really loud. And also the scary music was really outdated. It gave me like black and white movie feel like Frankenstein's monster, like yeah. really, really old. You know, your great grandparents, they watch those really old ass films. The music was almost out of those it was jarring and very like yeah not it, jarring no, no. outdated well, and I'll just it no not even black and white films but you know those old school slasher movies <laughs> yeah. Da, 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 yeah. like <laughs> come on we have gone past that well now. they did do a shining sort of reference you know with the cats and he slashed the wall and then the eye came out the whole here's Johnny sort of situation. They did they did lots of references, like the Dora and Dora references, the Naruto references. But I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking I'm about saying... the things that took away from it being scary. The animation at sometimes, the the lack of detail. Like there's a lot of 
people who do horror so well and I don't think that they did horror very well. I know it's supposed to be sci-fi but they're clearly trying to scare us. There was a lot of jump scares and stuff like that but it, it wasn't it wasn't scary. Yeah, they should have got Jinshi Aiko on the, on the team and then they would have sorted it out, I guess, because he could create monsters. He, yeah, but his style of horror is completely different to what they were doing here. No, I, no, I hear you, but... He's just a genius. There's no there's no comparison. Please don't compare him again. I didn't compare him, fam. Don't, don't do that. Calm down. Don't calm do down. that. Look, look, look. <laughs> look, we're not trying to fight. We agree in here. We're agreeing. <laughs> I'm sorry I cussed your man. My bad. <laughs> uh, chill out, but he, he is awesome. Like I was saying before, I, I loved the way that a lot of the episodes felt like they could be standalone episodes, but right when you were feeling that, they jumped again to connecting dots. Yep. They did that really, really great. And I also appreciated the fact that this was an all female cast. I know it's a Yuri, but it's written by a guy. Really? Oh, okay. There's actually a lot of controversy surrounding the fact that a man wrote it what? because a lot of people feel that because it's a Yuri, it should be written by a woman and that he had no place doing this and that he put it under a male gaze. How do you feel about that? I didn't get what I normally get from animes written by guys is that you know fan service and all of that stuff mm. yeah we did have the whole bikini thing and and the beach or whatever but it, it seemed pretty tasteful and there wasn't I mean yeah there was a whole undercurrent of lesbian tension but it wasn't in your face so I I'm, I'm quite surprised when you said it was written by a dude like good on you mate you did a good job you wrote good characters I think he did a good yeah, job. He did a good job. He didn't seem to be doing the whole fan servicey thing that like he said. Also, I like the tension between the two women. Nothing actually happened, but you can see that it's going that way. The two women. It actually gave me a rent a girlfriend feel where, you know, they're not confronting their feelings. They're kind of tiptoeing around it and they don't understand exactly what their feelings are either. And so I think that season two we're gonna see that develop a little bit more as well. I wanna I wanna touch on the whole undercover lesbian tension thing as well because like okay Toriko seems to be completely oblivious to it mm. and that brings the humour out because obviously um, and obviously Sorrel is like feeling all these feelings we only get the tension from her point of view mm. but then we also saw that we also saw obvious tension between Akari and Natsumi as well because them two were very touchy feely and I like the way Natsumi was like uh, I was worried that, you know, it was Toriko, but it was you, so it's cool. <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> yo, that was deep, man. What kind of shade was that? Like? Yeah, that was messed up. But I, I kind of get it. She low-key called her ugly. She just said she's not as pretty as Toriko. Doesn't no, mean, she said, can't... I looked at you and I wasn't worried at all because, you know, she wouldn't want you of all people. That's that's not what she said. She might as well have. <laughs> I, I disagree. That was shady as hell. It was I shady. Was I agree. If but... someone said that to me, like, it's her face, you know. But yeah, I kind of like the fact that she was jealous. And again, Natsumi was completely oblivious to how much Akari was giving herself over to Sorrel. I felt that it was uh, Sorrel fancies Toriko, Akari fancies Sorrel. That's me fancies Akari sort of situation and it, it brought a lot of tension and I liked it. It was a good little bit of interaction there. I thought that was the least interesting thing. What was more interesting was Sarau's eye and the effect it had on Akari where she can literally look at her and cause her to turn into this strange beast. Now there's got to be something going on with that and also it made me feel like Satsuki is actually evil. Yeah, 100%. The whole way through. So I'm wondering if she is even human at all. Now, Toriko hasn't noticed people who are human versus people who are not. Yes. But Sarau routinely notices, but she hasn't actually met her properly, only on the other side. And each time she's been eerie, she does not feel human to me. Yeah, I feel like she's preparing for something. She's gathering her troops for something. Why did she give her that cat? She must have known it was going to embed itself into Akari. Yeah, she must have. But maybe, like, I feel like, even though everyone's trying to find Satsuki, Satsuki's trying to find Sorrel for some reason. Maybe it's a family reunion. Maybe it's an Orochimaru sort of situation where she needs a new body and this will do. I don't know. Wow. Like, now that's interesting. Like, literally, this show has given me so many thought processes and which way it can go that I've been like, you know what? 
this was an interesting watch. It was really good. I liked the stories that I could create from the stories I was given. Now, I've got one little theory and a couple of questions within that theory. And it's surrounding the other side and how it looks. So to me, the other side resembles an abandoned human world. And there seems to be certain things that are crossovers, such as the station was basically a Japanese station in the real world. Yeah. And we also have been seeing these gates I don't know if they're opening up more because of the frequency of surround to Rico going to the other side or not, but it does seem to be appearing more often and the people from the other, all the beings from the other side seem to be making more contact within this world. And it's making me think that the other side might not have been the other side before. It might have been a, another human plane or a similar yeah. type of thing. And the beings, once they make contact, the more contact they can make, the more they can pull that world into the other side or change it into the other side. So it's making me think that what the beings on the other side are trying to do is actually turn this human world into the other side. Or, or an in-between. Because in there are in-betweens. The in-betweens as well, like let's like that as well just made me feel like they really thought about the world building here. They created a system where everything seems plausible. And I think I said this in the first Part where I said it's like Doctor Who you can do anything you want because all things are possible and it gave me Doctor Who, Dora Hidoro, that those kind of vibes because infinite possibilities and as you said every episode could be a standalone except for the connectors so it was like a really great anthology to me. So what do you think? Do you think this is certified hot or was it a waste of our time? It was definitely not a waste of my time. I definitely enjoyed binging this. I can't wait for season two and I hope they get one. For me, this is Certified Heart as well. Definitely, definitely loved it. I am looking forward to season two as well. But yeah, guys, let us know what you think. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Peace.